James, it is December 16th. Yeah, we're officially we're officially past halfway point. I can't believe it. The month is going by so quickly. Yep. Uh, Discovering Victory Podcast, our desire is to share with you messages that have been preached from the pulpit here at America's Keswick by some of our, some of the greatest yeah. Bible teachers in this country. And it was a real thrill this past summer to have Dr. Crawford Loretz share God's Word yeah, with us. For sure. An amazing awesome. communicator. His messages were so timely. This is part two of the message that we shared. You can go back and watch the first part on our YouTube channel, America's Keswick One. But let's give a listen to Dr. Crawford Loretz as he shared God's Word with us today. So what does a shepherd do? He provides comfort. What does he do? He provides protection. But this psalm is like a, a great symphony. I, I am very eclectic in my taste of music. I, I like all kinds of music, but it might surprise you. I, I love classical music, particularly the Baroque era. But I love classical. I like going to symphonies. One of the things I love is, you know, the, the pure math combined with artistry that's mingled together in a great symphony that moves toward a grand crescendo. And that's what this psalm is like. It begins with him comforting him. Oh, oh, by the way, he protects me. Not only does he protect me, but the third category of, 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 of provision is what I call a, a honor and favor. Right. Honor and favor. Listen to these words. He says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. I, I want you to check this out. David is being biographical here. David knew about enemies. But he also lived long enough to know that no, hear me on this. Somebody needs to hear this. No mortal being, no mortal being, no mortal being can stop what God wants to do in and through your life. Did you hear what I just said? Stop giving people that much power over you. When God wants to bless you and use you, nothing or no one can stop it. And so David says, you, you, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Listen to those words. There's this big dais up here loaded with food. And I'm the only person sitting at the head table. And you do this in the presence of people who want me very dead. And you, you give me abundance. Then he says, now don't miss this. Then he says, and then you anoint my head with oil. You know the significance of that? You know the significance of that? The anointing, when you, the anointing was to say that you are the most significant person here. And my favor rests upon you, not on them. That I've selected you. You pour oil all over me. I've got to spread. My enemies are out there. They're watching me. You're honoring me. And then you're saying as you pour the oil on me, that's my dude. That's my dude. My hand is over him and on him. You anoint my head with oil. And then he says, my cup overflows. I owe this insight to Ray Vandal, the, 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 the noted Hebrew scholar. We read these things. <laughs> Vandal points out that what David is saying here was a custom that they did at feasts and banquets near the end of the banquet. Hang in there. You see, as the night would go on and the invited guests were there, when it came time for y'all to leave, what the host would do, he would tell the servers to fill up the chalices only about a third or halfway. And if you 
filled up, you held up your wine glass or your chalice, and, it, and the wine only went about a third or a half, half of the way there. That was meant to tell you, well, you don't have to go home, but you got to get out of here. <laughs> the party's over. Okay, <laughs> last call. <laughs> this is it. No more. But if he liked you, what he would do is that he would keep pouring the wine. And the wine would spill over and keep coming over. And you'd be standing there in a pool of wine. And it was as if to say, I love this guy. I, I want you here. I love you. Do you understand what David is saying is? Listen to me. Who told you God is mad at you? Who told you God does not like you? Who told you that God is against you? That is a lie. How do you know that's a lie? Because he sent his son to die on the cross in our place and for our sin. Rose again on the third day. Paul says he's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. The wine continues to flow. And he loves you. Cares about you. Why? That's all predicated on a decision though. The Lord is my shepherd. And because he's my shepherd, he gives me comfort. Because he's my shepherd, I belong to him. And God always takes care of what belongs to him. He provides you with protection. You know what? Because your mind gives you honor and favor. Well, the fourth one is this. The crescendo and climax, fortissimo. <laughs> David says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This fourth one I've labeled is comfort, this protection, this honor and favor. But this, this fourth one, I, I, I've labeled merciful goodness. Right. See, what David is actually saying is that I, 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 I don't deserve the blessing, the protection, and the comfort. When I look at my life and the imperfections in my life, the inconsistencies in my life, I don't deserve this. Godly Christians never, ever ever say what they would not do. They never, ever are branded by self-righteousness. David says, goodness and mercy. Mercy. Mercy shall follow me. Because David is saying, I understand, I deserve hell. I don't, I don't deserve what this shepherd is doing for me. I don't deserve him bailing me out. I don't deserve him cleaning me up. But I know that if I stay behind the shepherd, he's going to clean up behind me. Because the text says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. We've got 11 grandchildren. Love them to death. I tell my, grand, my, my children that their only reason for existence is transformation from my grandchildren. All right. It's hard to say I'm kidding, but there's a little bit of truth to that. Um, you know, we got a three-day limit when, when, when our adult kids come home. You know, adult kids can bring a little drama, right? And I figure if God can raise Jesus in three days, you can get out of my house in three days. So, but I, 
<laughs> hey, man. You know, but the grandkids, they're great, right? The grandkids stay as long as they want to. So, ah, uh, yeah, there's a lot of truth to that statement. But, um, but when, when, when our grandkids was really small, my, my wife is one of the most creative. She's the gr- best grandmother in the world. They love them some Mimi. And, uh, uh, but when they were really small, we we're talking, you know, like 18 months, two years old, three years old, right around there. We, we had Mimi and Papa camp, which meant that I had to take extra vitamins, Jack. <laughs> There's a reason why young folks have babies. I just want you to know. So I'm here, I'm coming and go, <gasps> okay, let's get ready for this. <laughs> Work out, <laughs> you know, get in shape. Uh, and uh, so they would just all day long, and Karen would have all these games. They'd keep them busy all day long. And, uh, and you know, they get their baths and all this stuff. And then, uh, uh, then they'd take them, go upstairs to, to bed. And, but every, every day, every night, I, mean, I, I don't know how two-year-olds can, can mess up a wall. <laughs> I mean, spaghetti stains and all this stuff on the walls and... You know, drawing a picture of Papa on the wall. I said, why are you drawing a picture? Well, the other pictures on the wall, Papa, okay, I'll put a frame around me. You know, all this stuff. I mean, no, not really. But, you know, but, but seriously, but I am so grateful for Mr. Clean Eraser. That's one of the great products in the world. Karen will take them up there, and I'm erasing the wall every night. Just to erase. But isn't that what the Lord does for us? Goodness and mercy, Crawford. Goodness and Crawford. No, God doesn't wink at sin, and we're, you're going to hear me talk about that later this, this week. No, I'm not talking about grace is not permission, and you just don't, you don't, but, but, but when, we, when we confess and repent, the shepherd. Goodness and mercy shall follow. So, let me see if I can land a plane here. I think that there's four applications responsive to these four categories of provision. And I hope we do it this week. Yahweh, the Lord, is my shepherd. So he provides me with comfort. I want to encourage you this week. Carve out time to stop and breathe. Stop and breathe. Go sit by the lake. Sit under a tree. Leave your phone. Turn the phone off sometime, okay? Stop and let him. He wants to comfort you more than you want to be comforted. Stop and breathe. The second category of provision is protection. What I want you to do this week is to lift your sights and go vertical and see him as greater than anything that's facing you. And trust him. Trust him. He wants to protect you. And then sit and receive the fact that our great God really loves you. He likes you. He likes you. So remember whose you are. That you belong to him. And the fourth thing I would say to you this, this week is to release the shame. There's a difference between authentic biblical guilt. Biblical guilt is specific. The Holy Spirit does not have a speech impediment. And if you've done something wrong, 
He will specifically point it out to you. Shame is mired. Shame is mired in self-recrimination and the accusations of the accuser of the brethren. If you've confessed that to the Lord, you made it right and you've lined up with the scriptures, release the shame. And accept the goodness and mercy of our great God. Father, we thank you for yourself. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, that you, you love us. Thank you for this incredible song. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God, you are a shepherd. May we meditate on what that means, Father. Embrace it completely. Incomprehensible love. Thank you for caring for us. Thank you for loving us enough that you even came alongside and broke our legs to give us a holy handicap to keep us dependent upon you, Lord. God, overwhelm us with your goodness and grace and your presence, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, let's uh, rehearse some of the things that are happening. Let's go through it. We do have our Christmas Eve um, service coming up, so that's exciting. Six o'clock <clears throat> in the Colony Chapel. It's going to be a candlelight service, Beautiful. music, message. We'd love to have you join us as we celebrate the day before Christmas yeah. Day. Yeah, and then there's another Eve, New Year's okay, Eve. New Year's Eve. Yep. And uh, the Rick Webb Family Singers will Beautiful. be here with us for the dinner concert. Great meal. Colony guys will be singing. Uh, just a great evening to celebrate and we always do one fun thing as mm -hmm. a part of that which great audience participation it's become a keswick tradition okay we're going to keep that a surprise yeah we will i like it so check it out dr out. roger wilmore will be sharing god's word at our watch night service immediately following the dinner concert and then he will be bringing the first message of not only the new year 2023 but the first message of our hundredth summer wow. season awesome. which is just really really cool. anchored faithful through the ages it's going to be the theme amen awesome all right what else there's a few things worth mentioning coming up in january so just into the new year we have our next hymn sing on the fifth and the theme is going to be spirituals you want to give them a little insight yeah we did we did this uh last year to actually two years ago there's some wonderful spirituals in the hymn book that we all forget are spirituals mm. Uh, but Dr. Richard Allen Farmer encouraged us to look at some of the music from the black tradition. And uh, a lot of these songs you know. So we're going to have a good time as we dig a little deeper into those and awesome. have fun singing those. Beautiful. Yep. And then just one more thing in early in the, in the month of January is our next Girl Talk is going to feature Wilma Rittinger. So looking forward to that. So would you consider a year-end gift for the Ministry of America's Keswick? The lion's share of our giving comes in in the month of December. And so we depend on friends like you to support us with your gifts and with your prayers. We would love to end this year in the black. And so if you could help us today, call 1-800-453-7942. You can give a gift online, www.americaskeswick.org. Donate now. When you call, you can also ask for a copy of our 2023 Bible reading plan. We are going to be reading through the Bible chronologically. You can get a hard copy or you can download that from our website, yeah. www.americaskeswick.org. We take, we just enjoy the fact that you are following us on our podcast. Uh, that keeps Zach employed here at America's Keswick. That's it right. gives him something to do. Amen. We wouldn't be able to do this without Zach. No, absolutely not. So we appreciate him behind the camera. Yep. But thank you for being a part of this ministry. Hey, join us next week, Monday, Worship Live at 1.30. God bless.